So I thought I'd kick the whole course off with oscillators, and that really makes sense to me at least, because oscillators are really the source of any sound in subtractive synthesis. And that's mainly what we're going to be looking at in this course. I'm going to mix it up a little later and we'll, we'll cover some FM, and we'll also use several different synths. But here, at least in the ES2, you can see that the oscillators are the very source of all sound. Turn the oscillators off, and besides self-oscillation, which we're also going to look at, um, the synths really won't make any noise. So it's really important to get your oscillators right. So this chapter is really going to focus on some tips and tricks to sort of fatten up existing sounds and really build a good foundation for, for cool sounds moving forward. So what you can see here is just a single oscillator. In fact, I'm going to turn oscillator 2 off. And we're just going to have this first single saw wave and the filter is completely open and I've got a very basic sequence. I've switched the synth onto mono. So it's just a monophonic sequence and it's very, very simple. What I'm going to show you is something called detune and it's a really, really basic technique and a lot of synthesizers have it. They may actually only appear to have one oscillator, but they'll have an effect at least that can produce this detune sound and this detune sound is really the, the key to getting re these huge sort of wide synth sounds and we're going to see how that works right now. So it's going to involve using two oscillators. Let's play back the first oscillator to start with. And it's pretty fat already. It sounds great. It's just a, like I say, just a single saw wave, but it sounds pretty cool. So if we were to introduce a second saw wave, and this little mixer here in the ES2 will allow us to move between these two oscillators. So if I move straight between them, it should sound exactly the same because essentially we've got two oscillators that are identical. Sometimes this little matrix doesn't really behave itself as it should, but it's very cool. It allows you to really mix at a completely variable rate uh, which oscillator you, you know you want in. So you probably heard as we moved between the two oscillators that halfway in between we got a bit of a phasing effect, and I'm going to lock it there now so you can hear that. Now, because these two oscillators are basically identical and exactly the same and have the same settings, you're getting a bit of phase cancellation there. That's what you can hear. You've probably lost some low end and you've probably lost some volume compared to it being on one side. It's a similar effect if you were to play two records on two decks and basically have them mixing the same record mixed exactly the same time, you're going to get that phase cancellation. Now, to combat this and to also make the sound even fatter, we want to detune one. So we're making one different to the other one, essentially, just by tuning it. So you're getting two waves that are following each other and then we're unlocking that sort of syncopation and we're allowing them to, to move freely. What this does is it's doubling up the amount of oscillators that we're using. So if we were to move down to say seven, it's a little bit more subtle, but really you can get away with even very slight differences. Go too far, and you get like a really true Hoover effect, uh, sort of similar to a classic Juno effect. This is commonly known as a Reese. So, you know, these sounds are sort of really famous Reese sounds or Hoover sounds. But if you want just a subtle, subtle effect, you probably about 15 is pretty cool. So switch off the second oscillator and it suddenly sounds really vanilla and probably a little bit boring. So really cool for wide basses, big leads, huge pads. Try this in polyphonic mode. In fact, let's switch it to poly mode and I'll play a chord. 
sounds really big and really lush. So an instant way to give yourself bigger patches just by adding a second oscillator. And really we've just not even hit the filters yet. So let's look in the next video at something similar. I'm gonna show you some similar styles of layering and we're gonna use sevenths and fifths to create some even more interesting sounds.